Hello Mitch, this is Matthew with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and with the help of my GoPro camera, I'm going to show you how I cut your prescription lenses for your Ray-Ban 2132 color 622 in size 55, the large. You saw me wearing the smaller 52, you are getting the larger 55 and the new Wayfair in the black rubber. Let's go ahead and take everything out of its original packaging. Your Ray-Ban case, your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth which by the way I will be giving you instructions on how to care for that this is how they send it to me wrapped in plastic and they even put a plastic sleeve over the left temple for shipping if they think that's a good idea well guess what I'm gonna put a second one on that side actually wait you're picking these up I don't have to ship these I don't have to ship these but this is how they come with the original G15 lenses in there the first thing I'm gonna do pop these out the heavy glass lenses I'm gonna put your lighter weight polycarbonate lenses in there but this is your Italian frame that I will put into my Italian Santanelli LE1000 patternless edger and it's going to trace the shape of your right lens and then it's going to scoot over and trace the shape of your left lens because here at freeprescriptionlenses.com everybody loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality you buy a frame and you get free clear single vision lenses and all you did was pay the upgrade to have the anti-glare put on there. So we have now traced the shape of your frame. I'm going to pull it up on the computer. Your pupillary distance is 35 for the right eye. Hang on, I'm programming, I'm programming. And 33 for the left. Just doing a little programming here, a little programming. Okay. This is a polycarbonate lens. I'm going to cut on the soft cycle because of the anti-glare. And this is a Xyle frame, which is an old school name for plastic. So the first thing I'm going to do is take your right lens, which reads minus 50, minus 250 at 102. I pull it out of the package. How's this for special effects? Look through there. Ooh, dude, those are your eyes. Those are your eyes. Okay, let's get to work. Let's get to work. Minus 50, minus 250 at 102, so I spin the axis wheel on my Marco 101 lensometer to 102. Turn the power drum to minus 50. Put your lens in, rotate it until I find the optical center with the sphere showing clearly. Move everything over, get everything lined up, check your astigmatism correction. We are good there. I'm going to put a couple dots on the lenses, which you cannot see, so I'm going to darken those. I'm going to need those in a little bit. And that is the right lens. Let's do the same thing with the left. It's minus 150, minus 3 at 83. So I'm going to spin the axis wheel to 83. I'm going to rotate your, let's say, power drum at minus 150. And then I'm going to rotate your lens until everything comes in clearly. Get that lined up perfectly. Check for your stigmatism correction, of which you do have. And I'll get to that in a little bit. Darken those red dots so you can see them at home. And label that one left. So I need to attach this block to there. This is what's going to hold it in place in the lathe while it's cutting. So I need to put this block here. And I'm going to use my little double-sided adhesive sticker. The black side is the sticky side. I'm going to stick that on there. Pull away the tape, making it a double-sided sticky pad. And by the way, these are available from 3M, the same people who make the post-it notes. So that is your right lens. Let me do the same thing for the left. And what I'm doing, if you can imagine the crosshairs of a scope, you have the vertical meridian, you have the horizontal meridian. I'm lining up your optical center so your red dot is dead center on the crosshairs. So let me put that block there. Let me put a sticky pad on this side, peel away the tape, and do everything else. The reason I put those three dots is I need a straight line so I can line it up and know that we are dead on. So I'm going to take your right lens, put it into the chuck. Hello, chuck. Excuse me, Charles. I don't know you well enough to call you Chuck. And then hit start. The first thing that's going to happen is this. The calipers are going to come down and trace the shape of your right lens onto this to make sure it's large enough to cut out, which it is. It is tracing the concave side of your lens first, which is closest to your eyelashes. Then it's going to scoot over and trace the convex side of your lens away from your face using the calipers to measure the thickness of the lens, knowing exactly where to put the bevel. The actual cutting wheel is down here on the bottom. It's the lighter color wheel on the left. It's like a heavy grit sandpaper that's going to grind away your polycarbonate. 
this wheel in the center with the channel is what's going to put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. I will have to close the door in a moment, but for now I just want you to see as your prescription lens touches the cutting wheel. So your lenses are an aspheric lens, meaning that a spherical lens is completely round, unlike your eye, which has two curves on it round like a basketball. Your eye is more like a football where it has a curvature going one way and that's where the astigmatism is, a second curve going the other way. An aspheric lens is much flatter. It does not give you that fishbowl effect. You will see the final thing and don't worry your lens is not going to be this thick. But it's much flatter curvature. It doesn't give you that fishbowl effect that cheap lenses will give you. So not only only are these the thinner and lighter weight polycarb. These are virtually unbreakable. They are bulletproof up to 22 caliber and have both UVA and UVB protection in them. So not only is it polycarbonate, but it's an aspheric polycarbonate where it starts off with a curve and then flattens out. Gives you a much wider field of view. That is where I start at with a high quality polycarbonate lens and then you can either get transitions or anti-glare and you got the anti-glare and what the anti-glare does let me pull another lens without it you can see how the lens on the right you can see how the fluorescent lights above me reflect off the lens well, let me actually back up for a minute anti-glare eliminates glare when driving at night particularly driving at night in the rain from oncoming lights but also street lights stop lights computer screens fluorescent lights it's also an anti-reflection lens you can see how the lens on the right reflects back the fluorescent lights above me the lens on the left does not so when someone's looking at you they're not looking at their reflection in your lens or better yet the reason why a lot of people buy it if someone takes a picture with a flash you don't see the flash lit up in the lens the third feature that I like which is the practical side is that it comes with the best scratch coating of any lens because the labs have to protect this very expensive anti-glare coating Now your right lens is almost done. It's actually putting the bevel onto the lens now. If you notice, there's water running now to wash away the optical debris, but when it started, it was cutting dry. Plastic and high index cut wet, but polycarbonate cuts dry during the cutting cycle. This is the only time the water gets on the lens to, at the very finished cycle to wash away any optical debris, which is actually a wasteful thing because you'll watch as soon as I take it out, I'm gonna put more sawdust on it. So one thing I want to do, as soon as I take your lens out, is dry this off because your anti-glare coating, it's also a hydrophobic coating, meaning that it hates water, that no matter what liquid, in fact, liquid cleaners are now obsolete with your lens. All you need is a cleaning cloth that Ray-Ban provides in your case, and I'm also going to give you one. Here's the Ray-Ban one, and I'm also going to give you instructions on how to care for your Ray-Ban case and your cloth so that it'll last you for years. No other seller is doing that on the internet. But you do have some rough edges on the edge of your lens. That's why they call them rough edges. So I'm going to use my hand stone, which is completely flat. I can put my hand on it while it's running. I'm going to go around. This is known as the safety bevel, where I smooth everything out. Hang on, did I get a text? Let's see, it is now 826 on Tuesday, April 15th, 63 degrees and raining in my hometown of Durham, North Carolina. This whole process will take about 15 minutes. And I'm using my thumbnail to scrape away the schwarf, as it is called. This is that white powdery substance. So, Mitch, have you ever seen a white powdery substance being in law enforcement? Well, this is a little bit different. And, and the stuff you see people try and save, whereas as soon as I scrape it all off your lens, I have it on the counter. I carefully and very cleanly collect it all together in one spot, and then I wipe it on the floor. This is where I love to say, kids, kids, stay in school. I went to school for years to learn how to make a mess. Stay in school and learn to be messy like me. Okay, I'll be shocked if this fits, but I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner and try and push it down. It does not. I know from experience, the bevel of the 55 is much deeper than the 52 that I wear, so I'm going to take it down about a quarter of a millimeter and hit the retouch button. 
The 55s always have to take down more than I do for the 52s. I wear the 52. I'm wearing color 6053, which is the blue crystal. I'm wearing that color today. But instead of going to the cutting wheel, it's just going to go to the bevel wheel now. And it's going to take a quarter millimeter off your circumference of your lens. The golden rule, you can always cut more off of a lens. You can never add it back on. So I start large and work my way down. So a millimeter, because most Americans have no idea what a millimeter is. There are 254 of them in one inch. Well, I'm sorry, 2.54 centimeters to an inch. So 25.4 millimeters. But it's the distance between my thumbnails. So I'm actually going to take a quarter of that, the distance between my thumbnails off around the circumference of your lens. Then I'm going to pop it back in to see if it fits. The other nice thing about your unbreakable lenses is you'll be able to, should you ever want another color, you'll be able to pop these lenses out and put them in another color yourself. I do that. I have one set of prescription lenses and I pop my lens out every day and put it into another color depending on what I'm wearing. So in order to put it back in, I just tuck it in at the outside corner closest to me, then using my thumbs, I press down and it snaps right in. Let me clean my lenses off so I can see. Now I'll put my glasses back on. Okay, let's take this out. Dry your lens off again. So again, with that hydrophobic coating, that's just like when you wax your car and it rains, the rain beads wide right off. The same thing's gonna happen if you use any liquid cleaner on your lens, so it is now obsolete. You never have to use liquid to clean your lenses, just the cloth will suffice. So I'm gonna use my thumbnail. And I do this so much that I've worn a V-shaped bevel into my thumbnail from scraping the sides of this. My friends call it my occupational thumbnail. So again, once in, I'm going to collect all the schwarf. And then behind the back, whoo, look at that technique, kids. How many times i got to tell you, stay in school. So again, to test to see if the lens fit, I'm going to tuck it into the outside corner. Oh, still alive. And then using my thumbs, I press down at the center. And actually, it doesn't want to. It's a little big, so I'm going to take it down some more. This time I'm only going to take it down a tenth of a millimeter. Now the right lens always takes longer. Once I get the size just perfect, I'll flip it over and cut the left. You can always cut more off. You can never add it back on. But one of the nice features about your lenses is it has both UVA and UVB protection. Now we know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin by causing burn. Your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you now have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. If you notice it's still a little bit dry here, cutting dry, if you can see, if I put my hand in here, you can see the water in the background. But polycarbonate cuts dry. Now the water kicks in to clean. It's getting a little optical bath. Say, so that reminds me, I need to take a bath. Talk about spring cleaning. I take one a year, and it's about time I take one. I know, you Mitch, you were thinking the same thing. That's why you wouldn't stand too close to me when you met me. You had to stand back, stay upwind for me. That's all right. I'll take a bath before the next time you see me. Now, Mitch came to visit me at my satellite office. The majority of everyone purchased from online all over the world. Just this week, I've shipped to Israel, to Australia, New York, Florida. Who am I leaving out? Arizona. And I got to ship to New York City tonight. So West 23rd Street, wherever that is. I'm looking around for the envelope. Okay. Back to the handstone. Back to the safety bevel. Back to real quick swiping that off. This time, I'm not going to leave it on the counter. I'm just going to stand above the floor and do it. Okay, dry everything off, which I should have done when I took this out. Now, let's see if it fits. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner closest to me. And then using my thumb, snap down and it pops right in. I want to test it to make sure it's not too large. Using my thumb, I push down at the corner of the nose. It pops out perfectly. And that's how you're going to change the lenses. Let me do that again real quick. Actually, let me start cutting the left lens. I can show you how to do that while that's cutting. So I flip this over. And now I hit start. Same procedure as before. It's going to come down and trace the shape of your left frame, the left lens of the frame, onto your lens to make sure it's large enough to cut out. 
Now, as you can see, your lens thickness changes as it goes around. Your lenses are like a bowl. It is thin in the center, thicker at the edges. But we're going to be cutting off the thickest part of the lens. In fact, we'll make sure that's in there. There we go. If you notice, none of your lens pops out. Let me go ahead and take this block off. I'm going to leave those red dots on there because that's your pupillary distance that I want to measure later. But as you can see, see how flat that lens in? Nothing actually protrudes out of the, the frame. You have no lens thickness. This is a real good choice with your prescription. So in order to check the prescription, I want to spin the axis wheel back to 102. And right where I see that red dot, I want to put that in over, line that up perfectly in my Marco 101 lensometer. 102, check the power. That comes in good at minus 50. Rotate until I get another minus 250. Now here's the lesson, if someone owed you 50 cents and then they owed you another 250, we would end up with three, and that is what I'm getting. So I'm gonna take that out. And then we will check your left lens in a moment. Now, oh, in order to show you how to pop them out again, I turn the frame downward and with my thumb at the nose, I'm right-handed, so I grab the frame with my left hand and with my thumb at the nose, I push downward, your lens pops out. In order to put it back in, you always push down with your thumbs at the nose. So in order to put it back in, I turn it upright, tuck the lens in at the corner, then using my thumbs, I press down at the nose. Now, your prescription reads minus 50, minus 250 at 102. Your left eye is minus, 50, minus 150, minus three at 83. The unit of measurement in the optical field is called a diopter, spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R. Everything is in quarter increments from 0, 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 1, and so on. Your right eye, the actual magnification you need, and yours is just the opposite with your glasses off. Things are too large. Image sizes are larger than they appear, so when you put your glasses on, it will actually shrink things down or minify, which is the opposite of magnify, but you won't find it in the dictionary. Your lens is minify, so you need two steps of correction to minify. You need 10 steps for astigmatism correction. As you know, you have higher amounts of astigmatism than most people, and there is a stigma over the word astigmatism. It just means shape. Someone has straight hair, someone else has curly hair. That is it, it just means shape. It is not a disease, it is not an affliction. It comes and goes, it fluctuates, it's no big deal. Everyone freaks out over that word. This first box gets everything the right size. This takes away the fuzzy edges, so sixes and eights and P's and F don't look alike. Now the 102, if you can imagine this straight line, the top of this card being being a straight line from 0 to 180 as the horizontal meridian, the vertical is 90 to 270 in a 360 degree circle. So from 0 to 180, this is, you're old school like me, you remember the, the fine tune knob on the TVs. This is what we're doing, we're fine tuning that knob to make everything crisp. So if we were at the 90 meridian, we're turning it to 102 if this were a knob, which is about right there with 180 being here, 0 and 180 being the same number. So we're we'll go from 90 to about 102, and that's what clears everything up for you. Your left eye is a little different. It's minus 150, so you actually need six steps of correction, and then an additional 12 steps. So you actually have 18 steps correction in total. This is where you make your high school algebra teacher happy. Well, at first, originally I made him sad, say, I'll never use algebra on my job. Well, this time I do. I have to add these numbers together, so that's why you have a combined power of minus 450, which we'll check in a moment. I'm going to take this lens out of the chuck, dry it off, smooth out those rough edges, use my thumbnail to scrape away the debris, that white powdery substance. I don't know why I refer to it that way, but I guess that's what it is. So when I clicked it on the counter, you know what, my wife hates it, sorry honey, I throw this on the floor, so in her honor, I'm going to collect this in my hand and take a very long walk over to the trash can. There we are. Who has time to walk that far and throw stuff away while you're at work? That's why I just throw it on the floor. I don't have time to go that far. So in order to make sure this fits, hang on, let me dry that off. I still see a little moisture on there. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner. And then using my thumbnails, I press down at the edges and it snaps in perfectly. 
So I'm going to take this block off. It's no longer needed. And using, well, let's go ahead and verify the prescription. So I'm going to spin the axis wheel back to 83. Put it in and I'm going to read minus 150 on the power drum. Minus 150. There's one, one and a quarter, 150, minus a quarter, two. Let's put it in at 150. Close that down. And we are dead on perfect at 150. I'm going to rotate it to check for your stigmatism correction. And I'm actually getting a combined power of minus 450, which I just spoke about. Come on, remember, we talked about this. Minus 4, 4 and a quarter, 450. So if you added minus 150 and minus 3, you'd have a total combined power of minus 450. And that's what we we're reading. Those two red dots, your pupillary distance is 35 for your right eye, 33 for your left for a combined power of 68. When I hold my pupillary stick up, I'm going to put the zero on your right lens. And when I move it over, we are getting 68 for the, when we hold it over the left lens. Hopefully you can see that. Hopefully my GoPro camera is good enough. We got 68 millimeters. So that is dead on perfect. The last thing I want to do is make sure your frame is in standard alignment, meaning that when I put it on the counter, it's in a three-point stance. So those three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. So when I put them down, there is no wobble where for mine,